You're watching a film called Tarantula from 1955. It's the story of an isolated Arizona desert laboratory that conducts experiments in gigantism. As often happens when scientists conduct experiments such as these, a spider grows to a tremendous size and escapes to wreak havoc on the local inhabitants. The beautiful and sexy young woman with the dark hair is 25-year-old Mara Corday. Her career began when she was just 15 years old when she lied about her age and became a dancer and performer. Because of her physical beauty, she became a pinup girl in numerous men's magazines and was called the most photographed woman in the world. She turned her modeling career into a wonderful acting career. In the 1950s, she starred in a few fantastically cheesy science fiction films. Everything seemed to be going her way, but then there was a man. She was born Marilyn Joan Watts in Santa Monica, California on January 3rd, 1930. Her parents were Emerson and Shirley Watts, and she had an older brother named Richard. During the Great Depression, the family was struggling, and like many people at the time, Marilyn and her brother spent their days at the local movie theater. Marilyn began dreaming of the grand life she imagined these stars of the silver screen led. She began traveling to Hollywood to meet the stars and to get their autographs. I think I've always wanted to be in show business from the time I was a child. My mother and I used to go to the beach, and in those days people would be playing ukuleles and dancing around and doing the hula. My mother tells me that when I was about three, I waddled up there and started doing the hula with everybody else. They all thought that was very cute, so my mother thought, oh my god, this child has so much talent. I'm going to get her into the Meglin Kitties. So she got me a tryout for the Meglin Kitties, which was a group of little kids dancing. I couldn't do backbends or anything like that, and I sort of rebelled against the conformity of it all. I went like three times and wasn't getting it right, and my mother threw up her hands in disgust. She just gave up. The Meglin Kitties was an American troupe of acting, music, and dancing performers consisting of children up to the age of 16. And apparently Marilyn didn't get in. I guess I loved the applause. I guess it was always in me to be a performer. I quit high school in the 11th grade to join the showbiz world. I went to the Power Professional School and joined the Los Angeles Police Show when I was 15. As she aged into her middle teens, her body began to blossom. One day on the beach, a boy approached her. He needed a model for a photo contest. She agreed and the boy won. A few years later, tired of hearing Marilyn talk about being an actress, her mother convinced her to audition for the famed Earl Carroll Theater, a cabaret restaurant which boasted, through these portals pass the most beautiful girls in the world. My mother kept hearing me talk about, I don't have to go to school because I'm gonna be a big star and da 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 da. She finally saw this little article in the newspaper that said Earl Carroll was looking for new faces. And she said, all right, you've got a face that might be new. She told me, you go over there and see what you can do, or you're going back to school to study stenography and learn typing and stop all this wishful thinking. To Marilyn and her mother's surprise, Earl Carroll saw her in a skimpy outfit and said, you're in. But there was a problem. Marilyn was only 15 and the job required her to be 18. So her mother forged her birth certificate and she got the job. Now she was a showgirl. The one problem she had was she was very shy. I worked so hard to keep the job and got so angry being balled out by a choreographer every day that I forgot how to be shy about anything. To Marilyn, now that she was working in show business, she had to have a show business name something exotic or glamorous. I was an usherette at the Mayan Theater in downtown Los Angeles, she explained, and there was an attraction there called the Luquana Cuban Boys. I fell in love with the bongo player. He called me Martina, which he said meant a little Mara. I liked the name and kept it. As for Corday, I picked that up when I was looking through a magazine and came across a perfume ad. Mara Corday quickly graduated from the assembly to principal showgirl and then to performing skits with the show's comic star, Pinky Lee. Sadly, on June 18, 1948, 43 passengers of a DC-6 luxury airliner were killed when the plane crashed. On board was Earl Carroll. The theater closed and Mara joined George White's Vanities at a the theater in San Francisco. After, she moved to Las Vegas' Last Frontier Hotel as a dancer 
and that led to a West Coast production of Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. For that part, Mara needed to dye her hair. Camera quizzer! Question, do gentlemen prefer blondes? Blondes seem to get more attention from men than brunettes. If a man sees a blonde walking down the street, for instance, he'll turn and stare to see what her face looks like. A blonde can obtain more work in this town as a model, but I think a lot of men prefer blondes who are brunettes. As for me, I'll again be a brunette in a couple of months. I was never a blonde until now, and I prefer to be a brunette. Mara Corday Pasadena, showgirl model. By this time, she had met many photographers, and they all wanted Mara to pose for them. It led to steady work as a model, and her career was so successful that soon she would be known as the most photographed woman in the world. I've got the kind of equipment, Amara explains, that can be cute, exotic, sexy, sweet, sultry, athletic, vivacious, and interesting. She deserves a whole week. Pasadena's Mara Corday 19 is herewith dubbed Miss Chiropractic Health Week. The title is hung on her by the International Chiropractors Association of Davenport, Iowa, in connection with the Free Children's Clinic operated September 18th to the 24th. I also learned early in the game that every good pitcher's got to say something to the reader, to give a message. Like when I'm posing for cheesecake, my message is, come and get me. When I'm being playful, the message is, let's live it up, kid. And when I'm being sexy, the message is, I'm yours, darling, all yours. I sat for so many pictures, she says, I should have been subsidized by the film trust. I've been photographed underwater, from a helicopter, even by ultraviolet. My mother stopped saving prints after filling up the 75th album. Mara has an exotic beauty, a combination of Welsh, French, and English bloods, a sensational figure, and a sultry appeal which landed her on more magazine covers than any other girl in these parts. It also landed her in George White's Scandals and Earl Carroll's Vanities. I asked her what she did at Earl Carroll's. Skits with Pinky Lee, she said. I was in the chorus in Scandals. I was shy but took up acting to get out of my shell. I worked in Gentlemen Before Blondes at the Greek Theater and Paul Koner saw me and got me an interview as a slave girl. I didn't even have a guild card. Then I was bitten by the bug and went to drama school, showcase studio near Hollywood High School. I played a drunken girl in Time of Your Life when Lucille Reidman saw me and took me to Metro. Everyone liked me except Dor Shari, so I didn't get in. I got this play on Highland, in a theater right across from Hollywood High School. The theater was called Charm Unlimited, and they put me in little plays and charged $8 to get in. The play was Time of Your Life by William Sheroinen, and Walter Koner was in it as a joke. His older brother was Paul Koner, who was one of the top agents out here. Paul Koner came to see the show, to see his brother. He came backstage and said, would you be interested in signing with our agency? I was just shocked and said, oh my God, of course. All the fellows and myself here at the Naval Training Center have just picked Mara Corday as the most glamorous girl in Hollywood in your pinup contest. I understand she came in third as the most popular girl. If you had printed her photo a few days in the contest, she would have surely won. She is over Monroe, Taylor, or anyone. Donald Strout, U.S. Naval Training Center, San Diego. Conor began getting her parts on TV and also occasional small parts in films. Janet, I'm worried about Pablo. He's hard to control. I'm afraid he's a born killer. Well, he's hot-headed. That's his nature. He can cause you a great deal of trouble. And more private than the hotel dining room? Perhaps you are one of my countrymen whose picture hangs on the sheriff's offices throughout the country, huh? Papa! You should not disturb me, daughter. I am engrossed in my campaign. But Kit Carson is here, and 
Kit Carson. Send him away. You just come in? That's right, just a few minutes ago. Oh, I see Captain McGrenn is registered here. Oh, yes, he is uh, across the hall from you. Whew. Hot here, ain't it? It's quite warm. My case will still be won, as long as the California courts are obliged to accept the Royal Crest of Spain on any document. Look at it closely, my friend. That is what matters in court. And we're getting sick of this nonsense. Listen, mister, I'm not in any racket but the model racket. So you're getting your signals crossed. My cut is just enough to keep body and soul together. Mara Corday's statement. Nobody ever told me about my walk, but the first time I walked away from a camera in pants, the crew just roared. Soon American film producer Hal Wallace saw Mara's photo in a magazine and gave her a screen test. She joined his small stable of actors in 1953. Two-time loser, a big executive at MGM started blushing days after he turned down sexy Mara Corday for a term contract because she didn't hit me between the eyes. She was voted the nation's most photogenic model by the National Association of Commercial Photographers. And the day after that, Hal Wallace grabbed Mara for a new Martin and Lewis comedy. Both Metro and 20th Century Fox told her she didn't photograph well. I couldn't understand that because I'd been voted the most photogenic model on the West Coast by several picture magazines, she said. When Hal Wallace signed me on a six-month deal, it was because he saw me in a magazine. I made a test for him, a scene from Country Girl and one from Gilda. Then he put me in Money From Home, but my part landed on the cutting room floor. When he didn't pick up my option, I was crushed. I thought, well, I guess I'd better marry and raise a family. One of her early pictures was a small part in the film Problem Girls in 1953. It was the most horrible sound system and the lighting was just atrocious because we were in a house, not a studio. It was directed by a man who was like 90 years old. He had done a classic German picture called Variety. He could barely speak English and was just hanging on by a thread. And then there was Tarzan and the She-Devil, and in this film she worked with Lex Barker. Tarzan, you could bend him a You could bend him to Copos. Raiders, take our men. Tarzan will help his friends. Tarzan will help the Lacopos. Tarzan will fight. So there I was, running through the jungle as this dumb little native. The only good thing that came out of that was that I fell in love with Lex Barker during that time, and we went out twice. I thought, this is magic. And the next thing I knew, he dumped me. Lex was the other love of my life. He took me out to learn to ride horses. He said, just sit in the saddle and pretend your mother is rocking you to sleep. He taught me to ride in 20 minutes. We had lunch and dinner together and a romance. I truly loved him very much. When Lana Turner came back from Hawaii, where she was doing the sea chase with John Wayne, Lex took back up with her. Mara found that as her fame grew, many of her more risque pictures started being resold to other magazines. Had enough of being cover girl. Mara Corday, the movie's newest glamour puss, moaned today that her pinups are being shown in racy magazines. And now that she's an actress, she doesn't want to be that kind of cover girl anymore. Mara is sort of an enthusiastic Ava Gardner. But before a cinema cutie makes the grade, she must often model for endless magazine pinup pictures to pay the rent. After they graduate to the higher tone profession of acting, they look back on their nearly nude photos and blush. No wonder there are so many sex crimes with magazines like this around, cried the beautiful brunette, waving a copy of a spicy tome covered with a picture of Mara. Next to her cover photo was the title of a story inside Loveless Women. Loveless Women, she sniffed. People will think that's me. I posed for this pinup years ago and was paid by the photographer. I had no idea where the picture would be printed. I've had some wonderful covers on good magazines, and I like those, but not these cheesy ones. Mr. Wallace, the actress added with dignity, tells me I don't need publicity like this anymore. Mara doesn't object to cheesecake publicity when it's printed in the right place. 
In fact, she happily confided that, although a big girl now, she still plays in a sandbox. This is another phase Cinema Cuties go through, wacky stories. Really, it's true, she insisted, and led the way to a box of sand parked in her dressing room at Paramount. When I was a chorus girl at Earl Carroll's, I used to go to the beach because I felt comfortable with my toes squishing around in the sand. Now that I'm acting, I still do it because I feel very relaxed. It's like those machines, you put a penny in and they vibrate. I put my toes in the sand and find it very stimulating. I also do exercises such as standing slowly on my toes or flexing my toes in the sand. Don't knock it till you tried it, she added firmly. Mara says she uses sand imported from Balboa Beach, and the sandbox has a glass bottom that my father put in so I couldn't get splinters. I'd rather go down to the beach at night, she said. Boy, that's the greatest. It's the most romantic place. Mara likes barber shops. Mara Corday is the kind of girl who can make a high school senior choose barber college instead of Yale. Kirby Mara, one of the nation's top photographers, models, and pinups, feels more comfortable at home in a barber's chair than she does in a beauty salon. To Mara, a barber shop's chair is more relaxing than a psychiatrist's couch. She argues that you cannot relax at a beauty salon. Your most innocent remark, she moans, is given the alley cat treatment. What few beauty problems this girl has, she solves at home, such as fingernails, etc. For her hair trimming and thinning and facial massages, she hies to a regular barber shop. She contends that beauty parlors deal more in gossip than in beauty. You always learn the entire and lurid history of the woman who preceded you under the hairdryer. That's what cured me because I knew the customer who followed me learned mine. Mara is a tall bronze girl who looks like a sultry Latin type, although her background is Welsh. She's often compared with Ava Gardner and Rita Hayworth in facial beauty. However, her figure is incomparable, measuring 38 inches at the bust, 21 around the waist, and a curvy 36 around the hips. Her legs are in a class with grables. Her pinup and calendar poses adorn college dormitories and Quonset huts from South Bend to South Korea. Mara Corday signs contract at UI. Mara Corday, the most photographed girl in the world, has signed over the weekend to a long-term contract by Universal International. The auburn-haired actress, who was one of the nation's top models prior to her entrance into pictures, has been assigned a role in the Tony Curtis Piper Laurie Technicolor co-starer Johnny Dark as her first picture under the new pact. Mara ended up not being in Johnny Dark but Universal International placed her in a talent program which offered her a wide array of training in the dramatic arts, such as voice diction, singing, dancing, even horseback riding. Along with this, Mara had the opportunity to act in many different films. During her time at Universal, she had her ups and downs, sometimes getting good parts in films like 1954's Drums Across the River starring Audie Murphy. Never give up, do you, Sonny? With Hugh O'Brien, Mara Corday, Jay Silverheel, in the tense action-packed story of a fighting adventurer who stood alone between a renegade powerful enough to provoke war and the terror ready to erupt across the river. And then there were films like Yankee Passa, which he only had two lines. And their ways are equally savage. In the new world, women are not the slaves of men, but men of women. Neither is slave to the other. But is it true that there is but one woman for every man? Yes, it is true. And yet you long to return to that land? Nothing could be more horrible. And lonely. Here we do not like for companions to converse with. Sweethearts on Parade, in which she had no lines but got to shake her hips. Playgirl, in which she was just in the background. Darling, I'm fine. The coach flight was wonderful, Pam. How much they didn't serve dinner? I'm in New York that much faster now. See, there ought to be a porter oh, around here. No porter for my suitcases. I need every half dollar I can hang on to. Frances joins the wax in which she only had one line and her back was to the camera. Camouflage instructor. A man in the wax? What is this? That's for me. Man without a star. There she had two lines. Hey, what do you think you're trying to do breaking up my piano? Well, it's worth $50. It's worth a whole lot more than that. I was talking about the saddle. 
But once in a while, she got a good part, like The Man from Bitter Ridge, in which she reteamed with her ex-lover, Lex Barker. I'm grateful to you, miss. You're welcome. But I really did it for myself. I saw that horse switch this afternoon, and I knew you were innocent. And then there were parts she had to turn down, like The Black Dahlia, a film based on the true story of Elizabeth Short. Black Dahlia murder case still unsolved. Seven years ago, tomorrow, Elizabeth Short, beautiful 22-year-old Black Dahlia, was brutally mutilated and murdered in a crime the Los Angeles police force has never solved. The murder will be in the news again within the next few months when producer Buck Randall recreates the story of the slain and subsequent investigation in the film The Black Dahlia. The thing slowing production of this film now is selecting of a girl to play the lead. We first cast Mara Corday in the title role, Randall explained, but when the announcement was made, she received threatening letters telling her not to go through with the picture or she would wind up just like the Dahlia. Mara was scared to death. Plus, the delay in other circumstances caused her to pull out of the picture. Now, in June of 54, Mara was dropped from Universal International, but only for a short time. A little item in the film Trade Papers a few days back reported that Lori Nelson, Sarah Shane, and Mara Corday have been dropped from the list of contract players at Universal International. Mara Corday, dropped by UI last week, was re-signed by the same studio three days later. Mara Corday dreams and believes them too. Would you believe it if Mara Corday told you that all her career decisions come to her in dreams? No, I wouldn't either, but Mara is such a beguiling dish that I tried hard to believe it. She swears it's true, and how can you prove that she's lying about her dreams? I dreamed I would be signed by UI before it happened, said the shapely brunette. I dreamed that I would get the lead in Justice Comes to Tomahawk. Now I'm dreaming about doing a picture that Charlton Heston is going to do at the studio. I haven't even been mentioned for it or anything. If that comes true, that'll prove I'm telling the truth about my dreams. But the biggest dream decision, she claims, was to stay at UI without a pay raise. This is a custom in these penny-pinching times in Hollywood. When option time comes up, the studio often tells younger players they can either leave or stay on without the usual boost in salary. Option time fell for several dolls at UI recently. Some, like Lori Nelson and Susan Cabot, declined to stay at the studio without the pay rise. Mara decided to remain, drawing the same salary, $175 a week. I dreamed that good things would happen if I stayed, she said. Besides, I couldn't face that dreary routine of trampling around to casting offices again. I figured the studio had done much more for me than I had done for it. It has given me a million dollars worth of dramatic training and all I've given it was attention in class, she recalls. Mara Corday underwent successful ear surgery and will be okay in time for her next PA tour with So This Is Paris. When Man From Bitter Ridge was released, the papers had this to say. Fetching heroine Mara Corday in her first starring role is most deserving of the honor. She glides through her role with the skill and charm of a seasoned veteran and has a natural and magnetic personality that comes across on the screen with remarkable clarity. Plus the fact that Mara's considerable physical charms are not dimmed even by the Levi's and men's shirts which she wears during much of the film. Her next film was a 1955 science fiction thriller. Mara Corday spins new film laurels. Mara Corday takes a giant step forward in her movie career with a co-starring role opposite John Agar and Leo G. Carroll in Universal International's thrilling science fiction adventure, Tarantula, which opens next Thursday at the Princess Theater. The girl whose cheesecake photographs have graced magazines, from the newsstands of America to the kiosks of Paris, goes academic in this one without losing her sex appeal. This is a road that has been traveled by at least half of Hollywood's successful stars, so Mara feels she is fulfilling a tradition. It's one thing to develop a formula on paper, another to make it work. So far, we've found an almost consistent instability in the material. One batch of nutrient varies sharply from the next. What do you want to try it on this time? One of the baby rats. You make it sound so, uh, so creepy. The unknown always is. 
one up-and-coming young actor had a small scene in the film as a jet pilot. All right, Ben. Fire two rockets on this first pass. It was Clint Eastwood. Eastwood and Corday would become good friends, and Clint would help Mara later in her life. There wasn't much there for me in the role, Corday admits. It was an interesting concept, and I felt it would be popular, but my part really didn't involve acting. It was not a very in-depth characterization. The spider was the whole show. Now, interestingly, Mara had a space between her front teeth, much like Laura Hutton had, but she hit it with a piece of veneer that she put in between. When the studio finally figured it out, they sent her to an orthodontist and she had to wear a retainer while not filming. They gave her some wax to fill it in till the retainer did its job. So that's what I did and it worked great. Until we hit Apple Valley, which was 120 degrees, I would be standing there talking, then my teeth would melt, she laughed. We could barely get through any of the shots, especially the ones where John Agar and I are standing by the rocks. That's when it fell out and I had to keep my little sterno going to melt more wax. 120 degrees, it was awful. When I wasn't working, I was in a bathing suit. Tarantula grossed more money for the studio than any other that year. Mara was given the star treatment with radio and TV interviews, personal appearance tours, and photo layouts. Hollywood Today, behind the screen. Movie cuties once wore dark glasses to avoid being recognized. UI's luscious Mara Corday wears them for a different reason. I like to stare at people without them noticing me. On this day of fury, when all that is evil rode into town with a man they called Jagadi. Starring Dale Robertson as the infamous Jagadi. Mara Corday, to her, Jagadi was part of her lurid past. The people in this town have been good to me. They knew who I was and what I was. Starring Rory Calhoun, a stranger who came in peace but stayed for vengeance. Yvonne DiCarlo, dangerous as only a woman can be in a land of lawless men. Mara Corday, Rex Reason and co-starring Neville Brand in a blazing adventure of the savage frontier. Soon Mara and Universal parted ways, and there were a few reasons why this happened. First, there were problems with the next two films they wanted her to appear in. It all started with The Incredible Shrinking Man. They wanted me to play the wife, and by that point I was fed up to my eyeballs with screaming and Indians. I thought, when is my break gonna happen? When am I going to be offered something with more substance? The title was The Incredible Shrinking Man, and it was all Grant Williams all the way through it. The role of the wife was a thankless role. I told my agent, there's no way I'm going to do this. I don't care if they suspend me or what the hell happens. Mara Corday's delicate beauty prompts Universal International bigwigs to cast her in science fiction epics where she makes contact with great spiders and other fictional monstrosities. She and Rex Reason have been named the human stars of the Deadly Mantis, a chiller in the Arctic that starts shooting this week. But Corday would never be in the Deadly Mantis. She referred to it as Tarantula in New York. She took the script to a bar with actor and friend David Jansen. I said, David, what am I doing? I cannot do this. This is ridiculous. So I sat there and took the script and started tearing out the pages. We started making little airplanes out of them and they were flying all over the bar. The studio wasn't happy. In fact, they were furious. An actress getting drunk and making paper airplanes out of their script? Then, in defiance, she cut her hair short. Her agent told her she was being dropped due to her bad behavior. But the truth was, they wanted her to feel guilty. They were actually dropping everybody. You see, when MCA took over Universal International, they completely phased out the contract player system. That meant Mara Corday was now a freelance actor. The first thing she did after leaving Universal as a freelance actor was Naked Gun. Oh, but certainly Mr. Now look, just because I bought the place from him doesn't necessarily mean I trust him, will you do it? I'll do it, but just until the bank's open in the morning. Here's my goal, Louisa Gal. Take good care of it. All right, hand it over. Hand what over? Don't give me that dumb act, the money. Sonny's money. Well, Susan, what got into you? Honey, I've been around a long time, and I've been with Sonny almost that long. Long enough to know his faults. A pretty face always costs some money. Well, yours isn't going to be one of it. Give it to me. 
Come here. Give it to me. I shot that in five days. It started off as Zarazen Curse. Two days later, they changed it to The Hanging Judge and then decided to have the story revolve around that character. Then the next day, it was called Naked Gun. All this while we were shooting it. It was the first thing I did after Universal. I knew we were in trouble when they asked me if I wanted to play the heavy or the ingenue. Well, I'm not as successful yet as I hope to be, but I do own my own apartment and swimming pool, she enthused. Over par. With a ball-studded crown and a golf club for a scepter, Mara Corday is all set for her role as the queen of the $35,000 Tournament of Champions Golf Play in Las Vegas, Nevada, April 28th. Go girl first! Actress Mara Corday of Hollywood received the first honorary title of 1956. She was named the 1956 Go Girl by the 33rd Marine Air Wing Station at El Toro Air Station. Her costume includes a jet pilot's headgear and a Mae West life jacket. Also in 1956, Mara began dating actor Richard Long. 